I'm Nigel Mottram, I'm an artist. I was born in 1943 in Birkenhead, just across the Mersey from Liverpool, during the Second World War. My art is very much influenced by memories of um, bot sites and debris and ruined buildings. As a child, I used to be enthralled by um, exploring bomb sites and um, I was attracted by the textures, the colours, the different bits of brick, shards of metal. I found those aesthetically pleasing, although I wouldn't use that word as a child. And my biggest find was that uh, at the age of six I found this dead cat. And I was so fascinated with it, I wore it around my neck for the rest of the day. My dead cat! And then at primary school, when I was five, um, and that, in those days they had blackboards and dusters and chalk and things and the teacher would be writing maths on the board, arithmetic and I wasn't interested in that but I was interested in, when she, interested in the fact that when she wiped the board wonderful textures, chalk textures, darks and lights were, the teacher would say, you're daydreaming again Mottram you're not just paying attention to the, to the maths but it was interesting in all the textures on the blackboard and um, that still inspires me, actually. That's still with me. When I was at grammar school, there was a competition uh, for the best painting, and everyone was doing these lovely landscapes. And, I, and when I was seeing my painting, I remembered back to when my childhood on the bomb sites and things, and all the rubbish and debris. And my painting was called The Contents of a Desk Dustbin. The teachers didn't understand this, they didn't understand the textures, the beauty of the textures and the, and the forms as well. Oh, and yes, I used to go to the art gallery as a kid over to Liverpool from Birkenhead when I was nine and go around the Water Art Gallery. And um, I'm almost abashed to say this. There's one painting in particular which I suppose influenced my my vision of life as well as painting. It was a Victorian painting, very sentimental, and uh, it was a Roman soldier standing under an archway in Pompeii, and all the lava is pouring down and people are fleeing, and he's standing there stoical, and the sight is typical Victoriana, faithful unto death. <laughs> and I thought, I've got to be like that at the age of nine, faithful unto death. I've got to stand there, stoical. Stoical like my father and mother in the war, I suppose, yeah? They were very um, stoical about it uh, whilst it was happening. And afterwards they used to complain about the lack of food. But they talked about one incident which stays with me. Uh, there was a when the Blitz was on, they were walking back from the pub and um, and the bombs were coming down and all the rest of it. And they thought, here we go again. They just carried on walking back over as if nothing was happening. Wonderful stoicism. Coping with things and putting up with things and not giving in. I remember um, during the bombing, my mother taking us to bed. She got fed up with going down to the shelters, underground shelters. So uh, me and my brother, she, oh, the bombing started again. She, we're not going to the shelves, it should take us to bed. What happens in my painting? I think figures on landscape, things happen in the painting. Um, and I don't always know why. And uh, I think one of the reasons I keep on painting is because I want the answer. Um, and it might take a lot of painting before I know, in a concrete sense, why that is. I think it's an example of doing something intuitively and not knowing on a rational level why. And I think that might come later on. I build a picture up from Memories of, the, of climbing over demolition sites and also not just memory, imagination uh, and feeling. Um, I remember back to how I felt walking over those bomb sites and uh, I have an emotional response to them and that goes into the, the use of paint. 
and um, on a cognitive level I'm influenced by the, um, the textures, the colours, the shapes that I witness on the bomb sites but also um, a feeling of a feeling of change, things breaking down, but things going to be built anew. There's destruction and aspiration at the same time. I think, though, on an artistic level, that uh, the landscape can reflect what the figure is feeling inside. The desolate landscape might might um, echo the figure's internal feelings of desolation. Maybe the figure is thinking about um, something's going to come out of this. I'm looking at desolation, but there's going to be a, a, a rebirth or a renewal of something. Something's going to rebuild out of the desolation. I think it's partly about that. We all go through times of struggle. We don't know what's, quite what's happening. We're uncertain, but we can still have dignity and courage. And the figure is trying to express, despite the the chaos that's happening around us and inside us, we can still have dignity. The figure is trying to express that. It's about observe, looking, observing the real world and trying to identify the emotional patterns or emotional response with the real world and what it triggers off in you. That's why people are looking. I like to think my paintings inspire people that all is not lost. There is such a thing as resurrection, or being a bit sentimental, redemption even, that you can start again. I see res resurrection as a symbolic image. That's one reason of reasons I'm a source of Christian, is because I love the symbolism. Because it says so much about, um, it elaborates and explains concrete problems. I think we all need symbolism. And I like Christian symbolism. That doesn't mean I'm a, a dogmatic Christian. I love angels. I think angels mean the best of people, the best um, aspects of people. Like I always think every now and again I meet someone really, you get into a conversation with someone on the railway station and um, you feel buoyed up by the conversation. And you go, I go away thinking, I've met an angel, you know. I, I think angels represent the best of hu humanity for me. But also, going back to childhood again, um, I like the idea of being able to fly. And um, I got some chicken feathers when I was about six and made some wings. I stood, up, stood on a stool in the backyard and leapt off thinking I could fly and I was so upset. <laughs> <laughs> the writer Howard Jacobson, he's on a radio program and um, he wouldn't come down on the side of religion or spirituality or secularism. He, uh, he, was, he said I don't know and he was accused of sitting on the fence. And his, his response to that was brilliant. I love this quote. He said, I'm not sitting on the fence. I'm standing on arthritic legs, a stride of chasm, a stride of chasm of uncertainty. And that's my position, I think. A chasm of uncertainty, I don't know. Mm? And I come down to what I said before uh, about human nature. I think, um, I think what's happening in the world reminds me that um, in terms of human consciousness we still need to evolve as individual human beings. There's still a, a, a need for evolution. We can evolve into something better in terms of the way we think and feel and um, are compassionate to, towards each other. Um, I, I remember a friend of mine saying um, when we used to talk politics he used to say, um, we're all three years of age. We're all about, the three-year-old wants to be omnipotent. And that's the side of ourselves we need to watch. We need to take care of. And that links to, uh, towards emotional patterns which need taking care of. And I think politicians, dictators, ministers, um, um, 
people like Donald Trump, they're all governed by the three-year-old inside them. And we need to develop individually. And I think somehow my paintings are about that. They're asking that question. And I think they're also saying we need, we need to do something about our individual selves, of things to improve on a collective level. I'm not sure how we could end up, but I think we need to improve. <laughs> and we need to improve by self-examination. And, um, yeah, that. And I think, I think this is where angels come in again. I think um, we could achieve that angelic quality if we continue to improve in terms of self-consciousness. We could become angels. I sometimes think we're a failed species. We're a rapacious species. And, uh, but there's hope. And um, I think, um, and again, referring back to Christianity and other religions, I think, um, the basis is compassion and tolerance. There's hope. There's hope.